welcome to our next video. We're talking about Markowitz Portfolio Theory. Markowitz Portfolio Theory consists of calculating expected returns, consists of calculating and computing variances and standard deviations, covariances, correlation coefficients first. Then we take a look at different portfolios. Say we have those two shares, share A, share B, with different returns in different situations. We already calculated in different videos. We calculated expected returns and standard deviations. Say for example, share A. Share A has a, an expected return of 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 6 is 9, 9 divided by 3 uh, is uh, of course 3%. So 3% and as we calculated already, the standard deviation of share A is 2.6%. So here we have the situation of share A. This way, share A has an expected return of 3% and a standard deviation of 2.6%. Now we're talking about share B. Share B has a re, an expected return, the expected return of share B is 2 plus 4 plus 6 is 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So 4% 4 and the standard deviation could be computed as to be 2%. So this is share B. This is share B and now we want to calculate, we want to compute different expected returns and different standard deviations for different combinations, for different portfolios. And we need to do the following. This is the formula for the expected of the expected return for a portfolio. And this is the variance. This is the variance of a portfolio. And it looks very strange or it looks very difficult. It's not. It's not very difficult. Maybe it's difficult, but not very difficult. It's easier than it looks. Okay, now, what we need to do, what we need to do is the combination, is to look at the combination first. Like if we want to have 50% of share A and 50% of share B, this is what we need to do. The expected return of the portfolio is 0.5 multiplied by the expected return of share A plus the weight of share B multiplied by the expected return of share B. And now it gives us 3.5%. So 3.5% is the expected return of, sh of uh, this combination, of this portfolio, of a portfolio consisting, first half consisting of share A and second half consisting of share B. The variance, the variance of this combination, of this portfolio, the weight of share A needs to be squared and needs to be multiplied with the variance of share A. Then the weight of share B needs to be squared and needs to be multiplied with the variance of share B. Then after this we need to multiply two times the product of the weights. 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. Then we need to multiply with the standard deviations 0.026 times 0.02. So the standard deviation of share A times the standard deviation of share B. And then at the very end we need to multiply with the correlation coefficient which we computed to be 0.945. So all in all we have a variance. This is the variance. This is the variance of this combination, of this portfolio. 50% share A, 50% share B. Which gives us a standard deviation. The standard deviation is 0.023. So as we see here, 0. it's 2.3%. It's 2.3% which means here somewhere in between 2% and 2.6% with an expected return of 3.5%, which means this could be this could be the combination of 50% 50% 50 
share A and 50% share B. And of course, there are different situations. There are different situations and the different portfolios look this way. So if we compute the different situations, we get, for example, we get this. I'd say we get this. Ooh. As the line of possible, of possible uh, expected returns and of possible standard deviations, which means for possible portfolios, we have expect returns and we have standard deviations. And the shape of this line depends on the correlation coefficient. So for different correlation coefficients, we have this. We have this. Or we have this. For different correlation coefficients, if the correlation coefficient is 0.3 or it is, if it is minus 0.5 or minus 0.8 or even minus 1, we have different possibilities. And those are. So the different um, correlation coefficients, coefficients lead to different shapes of this line. And if it is minus 1, this holds true. If it is minus 1, we have this. We have this shape, which means we have, if it, it's even possible to get a standard deviation of exactly 0, if and only if the correlation coefficient between those two shares is equal to minus 1. Again, if the correlation coefficient is minus 1, it is possible to completely do away with the standard deviation of the portfolio. This is very important for you to understand and for you to keep in mind. So, as an extreme position, if they are strictly, completely negatively correlated, it is possible to get a sigma, to get a risk, to get standard deviation of exactly zero. So that's important for you to understand about Markowitz portfolio theory. There are different expected values for each different portfolio and different standard deviations for each different portfolio. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.